Welcome to World History. Our first lesson will be on the Paleolithic era, that era of early humans. We'll not be discussing pre-humans, that is the territory of the science teacher, and we'll stay out of his backyard. We'll be talking about how our views of early people have changed. We'll be talking about art of early peoples. We'll be talking about tools of early peoples. And we'll be talking about the hunter-gatherer lifestyle, probably crashing a couple of myths you have believed there. Our objectives, in other words, known as questions that might be on your quiz. Describe the lifestyle of the hunter-gatherer. Discuss how scientists have changed their views of prehistoric people. Define the prefixes paleo, meso, and neo. All right, vocabulary. The Paleolithic is the earliest part of human prehistory when people had stone tools, but not farming. Tool is any handheld object that has been created to help a person do a task. A hunter-gatherer is a lifestyle in which people hunt, fish, and gather wild foods, but no farming. Nomadic means a lifestyle of traveling and never settling down. Hominids are humans, both modern and extinct types. All right, the Stone Age is divided into three parts. There's the Paleolithic, the Early Stone Age, the Mesolithic, the Middle Stone Age, and the Neolithic, the New Stone Age. The word lith means stone. The prefixes Paleo, Meso, and Neo mean early, middle, and new. The Paleolithic is when we add stone tools, but not farming. Dogs were our only domesticated animal. The earth was in an ice age. We shared earth with at least two other human species. In the Mesolithic was after the ice age. People made better tools, including bow and arrow. They made pottery. The Neolithic is when people used farming. They mastered weaving. They experimented with metals. They domesticated pigs, chickens, cows, and many other animals. This lesson will focus entirely on the Paleolithic. New views. <clears throat> Recent discoveries have forever changed the way we view the Paleolithic era. Gone is the ape man in the cave wearing the shaggy skins. Modern archeologists view prehistoric peoples as inventors and builders. Get over the idea that they all lived in caves. During the Paleolithic era, modern humans shared the earth with at least two other species of humans, Homo erectus and Neanderthal. Earlier scientists made them look brutish and ape-like in their reconstructions. Modern reconstructions tend to show Paleolithic people less ape-like. In modern clothes, you might not notice them on the street. Other types of hominids may have existed at the same time. The Denisovians are based on the DNA analysis of a single finger bone. And Homo florensis, sometimes called the Hobbit people, lived on one tiny island in Indonesia. And the dating of the fossils are in dispute. Uh, Homo georgicus is thought by many scientists to be merely a variation of Homo erectus and thought by some scientists to have lived much earlier. So not all historians agree on he these three. Paleolithic accomplishments, and we'll start with art. Uh, however they looked, these Paleolithic people were very different from animals. Humans are similar to animals in their biology, but not in their behaviors. So for example, reproduction, drinking, and growth are all behaviors that are shared between plants, animals, and humans. 
Animals and humans, but not plants, share things like hunting and gathering, herding behaviors, migration, and building shelters. But only humans show art, history, burial of the dead, ceremony and religion, making fire, care for the elderly, and true language. Scientists believe Paleolithic people demonstrated all of these except history. Paleolithic people buried their dead and included objects with the burials. No animal has ever been observed making a burial. Paleolithic people constructed art, cave paintings, and sculptures. Animals can be taught to imitate the creation of art. But no animal has ever been observed creating art in the wild. No animal has ever created art that has uh, represented a real object. The earliest known musical instruments are also from the Paleolithic era. Flutes. Paleolithic people also made these abstract patterns. We don't know if they're symbols and, are, and meant something or if they're just designs. I'll try to remember to put a link to this film uh, down below. Now we're going to talk about tools. Most famously, Paleolithic people invented fire-making techniques. No animal has ever been observed making fire. Another video. How Stone Age humans made hand axes. Well, the process started with a flat piece of rock. Then the humans roughly shaped the rock with a stone hammer. Using a hammer made of wood, stone, or antler, then they sharpened the edge. Then they trimmed off the edge by prying off tiny flakes with a pointed stick. And you finally had the finished hand axe. Sometimes an animal will pick up a stick or a rock and use it as though it were a tool. Animals, however, do not create tools specifically designed to be used for a task. Paleolithic people invented the needle, which showed they could sew clothing. No animal has ever sewn clothing. Paleolithic people also used rafts or boats. We know this because humans spread to Australia and other islands far too distant from the mainland to swim. Paleolithic people domesticated the dog. And this is a pretty good film about it. The hunter-gatherer lifestyle. Paleolithic people lived in small groups. Few people lived on the same land because hunting and gathering doesn't support many people. Many groups were nomadic, meaning they had a lifestyle of traveling and never settling down. We usually think of hunter-gatherers as being prehistoric, but there are still hunter-gatherer societies today. All right, the topic of violence. While Hollywood portrays primitive societies as more peaceful than our own, historians must base their findings on real evidence. The number of violent deaths in prehistoric sites is typically far greater than those of modern societies. This is even taking into account the number of deaths in the horrendous wars in the 20th century. Primitive societies in modern days are also much more violent than most advanced cultures. The end of the Paleolithic. 
By the end of the Paleolithic period, all types of humans had died out except our own. Earlier historians believed that we either killed them off or they died out trying to compete with us. DNA evidence now shows that the groups bred together and today's population contains ancestors from both groups. So here's a question. If these two groups were similar enough that they were capable and willing to interbreed, should they still be considered separate species?